Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for coming along. Sorry about the slightly late start, uh, but people are still coming in, so I guess that's okay. Um, wow. Um, my name is Paul Myers. Um, I come from London. I work for BBC. My wife. And love songs. He's a big sucker for romance, this guy. Aside from, obviously, bombing people. Um, he's quite romantic. Um, yeah, very interesting character. Aside from his social networks, we also get his Amazon wish list. This is the, the things that he's put on Amazon that he wants people to buy for him. And I think really interesting, they, Lee, they're all glittery women's shoes in, in men's sizes. Um, they're all size nine, so, you know, obviously he has a thing for shoes as well, uh, which is quite, quite interesting. Um, what else do we have? His Pinterest account. And you'll notice here it's under the name Kasim. Um, so we're getting quite a few different names, stated names, along with this. And what have we got? Um, one board. Two pins. I looked at this before, and I think it was um, wedding dresses. So he has an interest in glittering shoes and glittering gowns as well. So I don't know how you'd diagnose that, but again, you know, not my business. I was just asked to do it for CNN. So, um, you know, I have enough with my own investigations. So what, what tools can we use uh, to help us investigate people? Right. Let me show you a couple of them. Not that one. Let's try that again. Okay, by popular request, uh, somebody who was asking, how do you track somebody on the internet? How do you trace an IP address? Now, IP addresses, I should explain, are like the cell phone numbers of the internet. Everything on the internet has its own number 
be it a website, a live stream, or indeed you going online. And that's the way the internet communicates with different things. You type in cnn.com, the internet finds the number for cnn.com and tells it that you, with your number, want to see their web page. CNN um, sends it back to your number. And your number could trace back to your country, to your town, even to your place of work. This is a big concern for us in the BBC because our internet use traces directly back to the BBC. So we have to be careful if we're doing undercover work. But we can use this technology by building in little things into web uh, pages that will grab somebody's IP address and tell us where they are. So uh, a story I worked on recently involved somebody that was renting out property in London for something like half the normal price. People would see the advert for this apartment in central London and go, wow, just only £1,000 a month. I can afford that. I've got to get in there really quickly. And they pay the money uh, to the uh, person that's renting it out. And then they find out later that there's a family living there who've never uh, decided to sell their flat. So uh, this is the uh, video that we ended up doing. I hope this works. Okay. Might need a little bit of volume Try on this. Find out ex exactly where he is. Need to start up our email exchange again. Hi, Gary. Are you in London if there's a problem with the apartment? Where else would I be? So you're in London? Yes. Now we check if that's true. We've created a special website with pictures of dry rot on it. If he clicks on the site, we can track him down. Does the inside of the apartment have this? Not at all. You've nothing to worry about. Well, he's not in London. He visited our website and using the information that we gathered, we've traced him. Um, um, whereabouts is he? He's in Lagos in Nigeria. So uh, he's, surprise, he's saying the whole surprise. time that he's in London. He's absolutely not in London. Absolutely not. So uh, just a small little fact, but we can use this to make a fair go at uh, tracing people. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Now, I created a special website for uh, this purpose. Um, the difficulty was getting him to visit it. I use very special language there. If I said, does the apartment have dry rot in it like this, he wouldn't have even bothered going to the website that I gave him because he's not really renting it out. He's not interested. He'd have just said, no, don't worry about it. So I had to say, does the apartment have this? And he doesn't know what this is. So he has to go and visit the website to know what I'm talking about. And just by visiting the website, without his knowledge, we can do this. Um, so there are sites that make this a little bit easier for you. Um, what's their IP.com, for example? What's their IP.com? Find somebody's IP address. Now, when you go into this, um, you can see here it's already traced my IP address. But when you go into this, it asks you for your email address, just so that it can send you a report of um, the final outcome. So I'm going to make a fake way, uh, I, uh, email address here and say get link. Now, when you get the link, you have to send it to the person that you're investigating and make sure that they go to it. And make sure that nobody else goes to it, because otherwise you won't know what their IP address is uh, from other people's. So here we have a couple of the uh, web addresses that you can send people to. And when they go to this uh, link that you send them, it really doesn't uh, tell them very much at all. It, it might say, page not found, or something like that. But what will happen is you will be sent, see, page not found. It looks innocent enough they're not worried about it. But you will be sent an email telling you their IP address. Now, if you want to make a fool of them, you can uh, send them this link, which is um, <laughs> will uh, tell them that they have been traced when it comes up. It says, you're a monkey. Uh, so let's see if that, uh, if that does it. There you go. You're a monkey. Your IP and geolocation information has been emailed to whoever sent you this link. And there's the IP address. And it says it's in Nepal, in Kathmandu. Don't 
take this IP address as a really, really accurate reading of where they are. I live in uh, London, and my IP address traces to Wales, which is another country. It's just because my internet service provider says that. Um, also, this site says geographic location. Well, that's not true at all. Um, there is a website called um, Where Am I Right Now? <laughs> And that attempts to find out exactly where you are. It does it, first of all, by your IP address. But, um, as I said, that's not particularly accurate. This is really a lesson in being discreet yourself. This website can uh, work out my IP address, uh, my, my location, simply because it asks me to share my location with it. It does this by looking at my Wi-Fi connections and triangulating where I am. Sadly, we can't use this as an investigative tool. Otherwise, it would be really, really cool. Um, OK, so you can uh, also use grabify.link, which is where you send them a link to a normal website, CNN, BBC. But you use this uh, website to shorten the link that you send to them and uh, they will email you the results of the trace. There are so many cool tools that you can use to investigate somebody. This one is particularly powerful. Um, it's called hlrlookups.com. I have my phone here, and um, let me just take it off of airplane mode. And when I do, it finds me a local uh, Nepalese telephone company called Ncell. Now, when I'm in the UK, my, uh, my telecoms company is O2. But when I got off the plane in Kathmandu, suddenly I'm NCEL. I've never heard of that before. But this website will trace the current active network that a telephone number is using. So you can trace where people have gone to in the world. So wish me luck with this. I'm going to type in my mobile phone number, which is a really dodgy thing to do to a room full of investigators. Four, four. 7720427169 and submit oh I have to change the route to NT7 don't ask me what these numbers mean I think different countries have different systems so now it's doing a live scan let's see what it says it says that um, my original network is United Kingdom O2, but currently my roaming network is NCEL in Nepal. So it's traced me to Nepal, and I have got no notification on my phone that it's done this. I've used this on quite a few investigations just to see where somebody has gone and when they return. Uh, it's very, very cheap. It costs something like um, one European cent per lookup. So you spend $10 and you can do like 100 uh, lookups on it. Uh, they should really pay me a commission. <laughs> so cool website. OK. HLRlookups.com. Now, HLR-lookups.com. There is another one called HLR Lookup, but that's shit. So uh, go to HLR-lookups.com, and that one's uh, pretty good. So, are the tools. How many of you here use domain tools? Yeah, a couple of hands. Domain tools is a, a really lovely site that lets you investigate domain names. Now, um, all good stories ultimately come from your mother. And this was a story that my mother gave me. Um, my mother was going to buy a Michael Kors handbag. Michael Kors handbags are very expensive. Yeah? <laughs> so she saw this advert on uh, Facebook saying, uh, you know, 60% off. So she said, is this real? So I thought I would investigate. And uh, so this is uh, me logging into the internet as my mother, and she gets access to that advert because you get personalized adverts from where you've been shopping. Have you noticed that? If I go and buy a Nepalese to British plug on Amazon, the next time I go to Facebook, they'll be selling plugs to me. Really, really odd. So she clicked on that link, 
to um, uh, loveukbags.com, which sounds nice and local to Britain. And um, the internet came back with, here we go, clicking on it, this website, which looks British. All of the prices are in pounds. And when you click on one of the bags, you get an enormous discount down from something like 250 pounds to 45 pounds, a huge, huge reduction. Very, very tempting. But um, is it real? Well, she was suspicious because when she went to pay for it, it didn't have that little padlock saying secure payment. So I thought I would look up who owns the domain name, loveukbags.com, to see if they are based in the UK and that we can contact them and um, you know, get a bit more security. So I did a who is search on domaintools.com and a who is search reveals the registration information of domain names. And loveukbags.com is uh, stored on a website in New Jersey, America, and is registered to an address uh, in China, in Jiangzhou District, Zhuhai City. So not a local company, as we thought. Now, it also tells me the other websites that are stored on the same computer, and uh, they're often related. Like looking in a house, you get family members. And so the family of loveukbags.com, well, there's 40 of them living on that computer. We get Oz Handbags, which I guess is Australian. We get debags.com, which is uh, German. Uh, we get a French shoe shop, uh, a Norwegian website, nordhandbags.com. Um, loads and loads of different handbag websites from all around the world. And if we go to nordhandbags.com, um, it is exactly the same website, except the prices are in Norwegian money instead. How do we use this? Well, sometimes when you do a lookup of a domain name, um, it says domains by proxy. They're hiding their identity. They don't want to be found. However, at the same time that they buy one domain name, they might buy 10 others, um, just to stop other people getting them. And those could be registered in um, their real name. It's also useful because when companies are starting a new operation, before they do anything, they go and buy the domain name. So by keeping an eye on a company's server, you can see their forthcoming projects, if you see what I mean. So it can be quite useful. Ooh, sorry, let me unplug that. At the end, we'll have uh, lots of time for questions, I hope. Um, uh, maybe that's a bit optimistic. Other uh, sites that I use for investigation. Well, I'm doing something tomorrow on uh, social media investigation. Um, but I thought I'd show you one site that I really, really like. Um, and hopefully, uh, it'll work. Uh, has anyone here used geofedia.com? Geofedia lets you trace social media activity by location. So you can find everybody who is sending a tweet or a YouTube video in a certain building. More people will geographically locate their Instagram posts than their Twitter feed. Um, however, um, you might think that Instagram is pretty useless for investigation. It's just people posting photographs of their pizza. Um, uh, yes, it is. But what's interesting is where they are when they uh, send the picture of their pizza. Are they in their company canteen? Can you then look at their friends and followers to find other people that work at the same uh, location? I have worries about this. The internet is running slowly. So um, I think I shall leave that brewing for a little while and maybe show you another tool instead while that is uh, logging in for me. Pen test tools, for example. Pen test means penetration testing, uh, which sounds a bit rude. It's, it's really for hackers seeing how easy they find it to um, uh, get access to somebody's computer. Pen test tools um, asked me to do a math question. 
uh, before it starts. And what it's doing is it's finding subdomains of uh, a website. I asked it to have a look at twitter.com, and it's found me business.twitter.com, blog.twitter.com, webmail.twitter.com, calendar.twitter.com. These are all aspects of the Twitter site that you may not know about. Using pen test tools, you can find hidden parts of a website, which is something that I really like. Um, useful little tool. Other useful tools that you can use to help your investigation. Has anyone here heard the term fusca before? Fusca is the Danish word for cheating. So, let's have a look at this um, picture. Let me, um, first of all, copy this web address, because I hate using this um, Internet Explorer. It really is um, the work of Satan. Let me, uh, let me go to where I, I love, which is, um, oh, hang on. Chrome. Chrome is my favorite browser for research. So here we have a photograph that I took at Arsenal Football Club, my favorite team, since you're asking, which you're not, but I'm telling you anyway. Um, and um, when I have a look at the image on its own, I can see that it has its own web address. The web page had its own address, and the image is on the page also. And this image is called DSC underscore 5134.jpg. This means it's the 5134th photo that I took with that camera. Now, some people will try and see if there are other photos uploaded by just changing the 4 at the end to a 5 and hoping for the best. And then they might change it to a six and a seven. Um, very, very slow. Instead, what you can do is use an add-on to Chrome called FUSK, F-U-S-K. And I can say this number, plus or minus, let's say, 20, 50 numbers either side. It opens it up in a new tab and starts scanning that web address for hidden photos. And there they are. So this is uh, always a good way. But it only works if the image has a number in the name. Tony15.jpg, DSC5174.jpg, IMG0002.jpg. Uh, it won't work if it's called um, Martin, you know, because what comes after Martin? No, it doesn't know. It can't guess. So uh, this is called FUSK, F-U-S-K. And, oh, Geophedia has come to life. Has it? Yes. Okay. So, um, this is 10 Downing Street, which is the home of the British Prime Minister. And if I want to see what's going on there, I can just click on this little um, magnifying glass. And it's now looking at that location for Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Flickr, Picasa, Yik Yak, Weibo, VK... Periscope and Vine. So let's just say Weibo and have a look at those. I promised somebody I'd look at Weibo. So we got like a, a few posts there from uh, around that area, and I can have a look at them as a collage. This is Weibo content from that um, vicinity. It doesn't mean that the photographs are of, of that location. They might have taken a photograph in one place in London, and um, then gone off to the Prime Minister's house where they sent it to the internet. So it's the location they sent the post from, not necessarily where they are. So um, we have all sorts of other social networks here, and um, Twitter is only one of them. We can also do analytics based on that location. We can see the most popular um, words that have been tweeted from that location. The most popular person who has tweeted them as well. So Becky Singh has posted two recently from uh, outside number 10 Downing Street and I can have a look at her. Oh, this is my Twitter account, by the way. <laughs> I, I'm not plugging it. I wanted to show you something. Um, <laughs> to do with photographs. 
Photographs contain hidden information. And um, this is called metadata. And you can trace metadata that is hidden uh, in a photograph. First of all, you need to get the address of the photograph or save it onto your desktop. So this is me. Um, you can't really tell much from the photograph at all. Maybe from what I'm wearing, there's some diagnostic information. Let's have a look. Yes, this was taken in the 1980s by the look of it. Um, OK, control X. I'm going to go to a website called um, regex.info, which will read the hidden metadata in photographs. And if this photograph has been taken, especially with a digital camera, it might be interesting. So let's have a look. It also reads metadata in all of these different formats. So what can we see? This photo was taken with an iPhone 3GS. Yes, it was that long ago. Um, January the 18th, 2012, at 25 past 1 in the afternoon. Uh, it was taken here, outside the BBC in London by a camera that was pointing in this direction. So if I grab hold of my little fella, that's not a euphemism, and just drop it here, then I should be able to spin around. Dun, 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 and let's see if there's anything that tells you where I was. There's the wall that I was standing in front of. And it's right next to this building, the BBC, the former BBC. They've now closed down this building. And there you can see our wonderful swivel chairs. Um, so where somebody is when they take their photograph could as well you know, be useful and diagnostic. But it doesn't always work. They have to have geographic information turned on on their phone. Regarding the time, that could be useful to prove that somebody was in a location at a time you might find, um, but not necessarily, because I've got a really nice digital camera at home. I've never bothered to set the time on it. If it's a photo that's been taken with a phone, then the time is set automatically. There's also the problem of which time zone they're in. Um, it will also tell you if something has been photoshopped. Um, I, for example, shortened my nose and got rid of a few chins. So, um, quite useful <laughs> for me, anyway. So, um, those are a few of my things. Let's see if I can you know, find you a, a few more. <laughs> all my tweets. I like all my tweets. That's a, a useful website. A uh, very, very little website. Um, it just lists somebody's every tweet that they've ever made on one web page, which is great because you can just save the web page afterwards. Or better still, if you're looking for one tweet that somebody made years ago and you don't know where it is, what you can do is just do Control F on the web page and you can search that page for something. So, um, for example, um, if I look for Insta, it finds me a, a post that I've made with Instagram um, ages ago. So I really like that, uh, that tool. Tweepsect, another interesting tool. This is from tweepsect.com. This lets you have a look at somebody's um, followers. So this was an Islamic State supporter, so-called Islamic State, called Khilafa S., uh, don't look for the account. It's probably been removed. Uh, if I copy his username, I could have a look at who he's following, but it takes forever to do that. You have to keep scrolling down and scrolling down and scrolling down, and then, you know. There are add-ons for Chrome that are called auto-scroll. And so you set the auto-scroll working, and then you go and make a cup of tea and come back, and it would have loaded them all. But I never have time for that. So I go to tweepsec.com, and type in his username and click on Enlighten Me. This finds me people that he is following, that it calls stalkers, uh, people uh, that um, are stalking him, you know, following him, 
which again is quite interesting. Who is following this jihadist? Who is he following? Maybe other significant jihadists. But most interesting of all um, is uh, the mutual follows. It will tell you who's following him and uh, f um, being followed back. So 26 mutuals. This is really convenient for finding people who have a shared interest in each other, perhaps colleagues working in the same company. So I, I really like that. Uh, I said I'd leave some time for questions at the end. So uh, what time is it now? I'm a little bit lost. How are we doing? 20 minutes left? Yeah, we get like 30, minutes. 30 minutes left. Oh, great. Well, I really have to pad then, don't I? <laughs> okay. And now my computer has frozen up. That's great. Okay. So, now that my computer has chosen this opportune moment to die on me uh, and not even move the mouse, okay. Uh, maybe we can take a few questions in the meantime while I try and boot it up again. Uh, excuse me, if I know the Twitter account for someone and I need to know his email, the official email, can I email Hunter? Only if you don't mind lying. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, there is a little trick, and it works in Facebook, it works in eBay, it works in Hotmail, and it works in Twitter. If you copy their username and you log out of um, Twitter yourself, you can um, click on the bit that says log in and say, I've forgotten my password. It will then ask you for your um, username and you type in the username of the person that you're investigating, and it will show you a redacted version of their email address. So you'll see maybe the first two letters, then some blanks, and then at whatever the domain name is. The email. I know the domain name. Right. The company it here it is. Then it might be a case of what we call <laughs> jigsaw identification. Nobody only has one social media account. It's impossible. Um, even my mother has a couple, and she's in her nearly in her eighties. So um, I would say that um, if you can try and find them on Facebook, then you might find other clues, letters in other places to what you find in Twitter and in eBay as well. One piece of advice, so don't ever use Instagram uh, with this because it will send them an, um, an email telling them that, you know, please reset your password. And so it might scare them a little bit. So if you can avoid using Instagram, hey, we're back. <laughs> um, if you can avoid using Instagram, then please do. Um, if you use Hotmail, then you can use the same technique to find their backup email address. Uh, if, you, if they have a Hotmail account and you want to know, you know, you're getting nowhere with that Hotmail account, try doing it with um, Hotmail because it will reveal their backup email address. When you join Hotmail, it asks you if you've got another backup email address. So we, we've used that in an investigation to try and find somebody's email address. Um, the, the alternative email address. So, I, can I go to the next question? Yeah, sure. Sorry, um, it's still getting... How, how do you look up somebody on LinkedIn without their knowing that you're looking them up? Because uh, there's uh, so many ways that they can find you and see you, and it's I know, isn't it not... Bad? You don't want to be visible. Well, um, there's a couple of ways. Firstly, become a LinkedIn premium member, which they give, uh, or used to give, uh, I don't know if they still do, free uh, um, premium accounts to journalists. They do. So you have to sit in one of their webinars, the worst word in the English language, webinar, horrible, um, horrible compound word. Um, but if you do for half an hour, it's very interesting, a bit of training and um, how to use the account, then they upgrade you. Then you can go to your privacy settings. And normally, I must say, if you want to see who has been visiting your LinkedIn account, 
then you have to show other people that you're visiting theirs. It's a game of you show me yours, I'll show you mine. And so you have to show them. But if you have a premium account, then you can see theirs without them seeing yours. You just have to go into your privacy settings, which uh, I'll try and do once my computer has come back to life. And in the privacy settings, you can choose what level of information you show people when you visit their account. Um, you can uh, choose to just show them minimal biographical information. In my case, it says researcher at BBC. Or you can show them full information. Paul Myers, ICIJ member, uh, researcher at BBC, blah, blah, blah. Or you can be totally anonymous. I'm not sure about being totally anonymous because I think possibly that uh, will scare some people thinking, who the hell is this that's visited my account? So there is another alternative. You can search LinkedIn whilst you're logged out of it completely using Google. In fact, it's a good idea to use Google to search social media accounts. So let me just say yes to my firewall. And let me go into, let's say that you wanted to find people that were lying on their LinkedIn account. Um, by the way, never search literally. Try and think what words are going to be on the actual page. I think that's uh, by far the best way to search. They're not going to say liar. <laughs> you know, under their career, you know, hi, I'm a liar. This is my LinkedIn. You actually have to kind of catch them in the lie. And one technique that um, I thought of years and years ago, and other people are using now and claiming the glory on it, was to catch them lying about their qualifications because you can buy bullshit degrees on the internet without having to do any studying at all. They're called life experience degrees. Um, and a life experience degree, you just have to give them money, and they send a nice piece of paper with the word degree written on it under the name of some um, university that doesn't exist. So um, let's hope this is going to work for me. It's trying to open all these other windows, so this is last in the queue. Let me close down the terrorist wish list, and let me close down that and that and Geophedia. And hopefully, see how us uh, trainers like to pad. Let's give this a go. Uh, oh, is it going to do it? There we go. Life experience degrees. And there's loads of them on the internet. Hamden State University. Now, I don't know that much about America, but I don't even know all the names of all of the states, but I'm pretty sure there isn't a, st a state called Hamden State. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's not a real university because it's a .com not a .edu. However, I can apply now for a degree, which is great, because I get all of these things, one original accredited degree, two transcripts, a certificate of membership, an award of excellence, a letter of distinction, four education verification letters, and I can buy a doctorate for $849 a master's degree for only $399. And they send it through the post, and then you can put on your LinkedIn profile that you've got a degree in any subject uh, that you want and any date of graduation. Free shipping, too. That's really good. So the, uh, perhaps the most famous of these bullshit universities uh, that widely used was called Almeida University. Uh, they're now under investigation, I believe. Um, their website has been taken down. Almeida University, I'm putting it in quotation marks to link those two words together. Now, let's say that I wanted to find people um, <laughs> uh, who work for the United Nations and are lying about their qualifications. So let's put um, United Nations. And then comes the tricky bit. Site colon, S-I-T-E, then a colon, LinkedIn dot com. And what you're doing here is that you're using Google to search LinkedIn. 1,120 results. The top one there, 
Bosko Milivojevic. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look. Am I logged in? Oh, I probably am. Oh, yeah, I am logged in. Okay. Uh, that's okay because I have privacy settings on. He does look a bit like a James Bond villain, doesn't he? So he's a field security advisor at the United Nations UNAMA, formerly with uh, OSCE and the Red Cross, and his education was Almeida University. Let's have a look. Go down a little bit. And he got an MA in International Relations uh, in 2003 to 2005. The internet must have been running really slowly that time because um, uh, he just applied online for it. Uh, MA in International Relations from Almeida University. He also went to Almeida for his um, BSc in Training and Leadership. That was a little bit earlier. Complete bullshit. Oh, well, I'm glad I'm logged in because now I can show you those privacy settings. If I hover over there and go to Privacy and Settings... Um, by the way, I showed this before, and a couple of days later, it suggested Bosko Milijojevic as a contact for me. So I'm just hoping that it's not doing it the other way around. Uh, it is always best, if you're doing it like that, to be logged out of LinkedIn completely. So let's have a look at privacy and phone numbers. Add a phone number in case you're having trouble signing in. Don't. Don't do that. Avoid it completely. Um, because... They sell phone numbers, I'm sure. Um, so what else have we got? Email addresses. Add or remove email addresses from your account. Change your password, language, location, name, and industry. Choose how your name and other profile deep fields appear to other members. So let's have a look at me. Um, mm, no, maybe not. I can. Oh, that's my profile information. So um, what else have we got here? Profile viewing options. Maybe that's what I was trying to find. Ah, here it is. Now, I can choose to have my name, Paul Myers, there, or someone at BBC, um, but I just choose um, anonymous LinkedIn member. So this enables me to um, hide who I am, but still be able to see uh, who's been visiting me. Now, you can't say that wasn't the most comprehensive answer to a question in the world. <laughs> so who has been viewing me? <laughs> See how, you know, it, it amazes me sometimes that you get hardcore investigators that don't have their privacy setting turned on. Uh, but, uh, all right, head of HR, culture and innovation. Three LinkedIn members, soldier, military officer in security and investigations industry. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> what else do we have? All right. Oh, there's my wife. My wife has been checking up on my profile. <laughs> oh, dear. So, um, you know, I, I said, oh, you know, I'm really kind of worried about giving websites my phone number. Well, actually, I needn't worry. The shit is already in the fan. There is a, a website called True Caller, which is a database of two billion different mobile phone numbers from all over the world. Truecaller is an app that you can put onto your telephone and if somebody you don't know rings you and they're one of those two billion numbers, it will tell you who they are. Uh, so again, I'm going to reveal my mobile phone number just to see if they've got me on there. So I have to go down to United Kingdom. Is it on there? Yes, it is. And uh, double seven two oh four two seven one. You're going to start ringing me now. Six nine. I don't mind, you know. I'm better by email, to be honest. And there it is, Paul Myers, my bloody private mobile phone number. And I can't use that for undercover work now at all. That's dead, uh, because anyone can come along and type it into True Caller and see who I am. But, on the other hand, as is the case with so many of these things, what is a grotesque privacy invasion for you is a good opportunity for you to investigate other people. Uh, we're not hypocrites at all. We're just hard-working journalists. So, um, Truecaller is an, a horrible site, but it's also an amazing site if you're trying to trace somebody. Uh, mobile phone numbers uh, are really, really interesting. As we saw before, you can... Uh, trace somebody's location, but you can also type it into Facebook and see if there's an account linked to it, and also into Spokeo that we saw earlier. Any other questions at all on anything? Mark? Is there a good free site? I'm, I'm, I don't remember. Not 
not looking up from. Oh, sorry. Is there a good free site for looking up someone's cell number, not having the number and finding whose it is? Ah, doing it by name. By instead. name, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's quite a few, but to be honest, they're not that good. The reason is that most of the time you're offering to register with them, and not ev- there's not one central brilliant website that everyone uses, unless anyone here knows different. Because I collect useful sites like that. Sorry, I got not a good answer for you, um, but um, you know, I'm sure one will come along. There's got to be a reverse true caller out there. Uh, the other great site, by the way, is um, sync s y n c dot m e, and uh, you know, so I, th- I think that's good as well. M e. Um, yep. Yeah, let's go and visit it. S y n c dot m e it seems to be down at the moment me sync me yeah don't put this on youtube who's video oh, you're videoing me please <laughs> i don't want my phone number to be on youtube uh, or my face for that matter uh, so let's try again double seven two oh four two and let's give it a go now, uh, it's searching, searching, searching. It's found me in France? No, in the UK. It wasn't working the other day. It just kept... Oh, one more step. I am not a robot. I am a robot. I don't know. <laughs> what if you are? <laughs> That's prejudice. That's robotophobia. Um, okay, so, yeah. When it's working, which it isn't and hasn't been for the last couple of days, it will come up with your name and also your different social media accounts, your LinkedIn account, and you know that's why I don't like LinkedIn and share my phone number with them, um, and uh, Facebook accounts as well. So it doesn't work the other way yet, but I'm sure one day it will, but then you'll just have the problem of trying to find the right person. Any other phone numbers? Oh, sorry, questions even, not phone numbers. Uh, please, is there any database to know... Uh information about person if I know the home address or uh, business address street oh, number yeah you know it, it all depends on the country uh, countries all have their own sources for example in the UK we have a, a really scary resource called Trace IQ which will give you their you know previous addresses and their mobile phone numbers and the email addresses that they've ever filled in on forms it is Incredible, but then you go to other countries and they say, "Well, no, you know that's that's an invasion of privacy," uh, and maybe they have a point. Um, so it oh, for for the UK, it's called Trace IQ. Have you heard of a service called Lexus Nexus, a big big newspaper? They produce Trace IQ. Uh, sadly, the login doesn't work for both of them. So I think look in the country. If you're doing uh, country research, then, um, hang on, let me just go into my own website here, which is researchclinic.net. In researchclinic.net, I have a links section, which is all my favorite websites for uh, finding people, investigating images, looking at maps. And if I go to business research, then uh, we have... um, Arachnis, which is a paid site that searches a huge array of sources in difficult to research countries. So if you need to find somebody in um, Ivory Coast, it will search newspapers in the Ivory Coast, social media, it will search um, government websites, shipping documents, legal websites, uh, business directories, Um, all automatically, and it will even translate the name into Arabic characters or uh, Urdu or whatever um, Japanese you're looking for. But it does cost money, so um, you can do it the slightly harder way by visiting investigativedashboard.org, and they have a database section. So if um, I'm automatically looking at Abu Dhabi here, And so it'll give you the websites of um, the Abu Dhabi Business Center, the Abu Dhabi Chamber of Commerce, etc. And you can just go to each of these sites. Um, Let's choose a country. Let's say, 
Um, 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 um. Bangladesh. I saw Bangladesh there. So, um, please fill in this form. Okay, I don't have a filter. Oh, well, maybe I have to just scroll down to Bangladesh. It's not going to do it for me. But you can filter by different subjects here as well. So, um, that's Investigative Dashboard, one of my uh, other favorite sites. They also allow you to search documents and databases. So, I, you know, you'd be surprised how many times you can find somebody's home address because they've registered with a government department or they've taken out a patent on an invention. Um, I have to um, register for um, privacy protection, data protection in the UK. So that asked me for my address. So, and uh, also another another really brilliant thing. Um, people will often register their own domain name. So you turn their name into a domain name and look it up as a .com or a wherever they're from, and you'll often find people's um, phone numbers that way. For where, sorry? For the uh, database for the resume of all people. In each resume, they uh, mm. have all details. I don't know. I think you know. For for, for that, it's going to be maybe alumni websites like uh, LinkedIn, for example. Um, one technique that might help you: what we did earlier, looking at people's usernames because they might use the same username or email address on many other sites. It's you have to do this detective work, following different leads, looking at the unique things about the person, things that they might like, where they live. Um, using the technical tricks of the internet to investigate. One um, example. Um, there was a pilot in Germany who decided to fly his plane into the mountains. Um, his name was uh, Andreas Lubitz. And um, I had a look for him on Facebook, but I couldn't find him. Um, I looked and there just wasn't anyone that was suitable. And then I, I thought, well, maybe if I search Facebook through Google by using site colon facebook.com, if his account has been deleted, I might be able to find it that way. So, here we go. Andreas Lubitz in quotes to stop me getting Thomas Lubitz or something like that, site colon facebook.com to ensure that I'm searching Facebook. The top site there, when you click on it, it said page not found. What gives? Well, it's been deleted and Google doesn't know that yet. But you can get Google saved copy by clicking on cached, that little black triangle. And so this was the web page. But I knew that he was a pilot, and I knew that this must be the right one because there's all aviation-related likes on his page. Strangely, it was deleted on the day of the crash. Very, very odd, that. So maybe the police asked them to take it down. That's my theory, anyway. I was watching um, the coverage of this on a rival news channel, and they had the same crappy little photograph that we had uh, really pixelated and nasty. Then halfway through, they had a real, real nice, full-quality copy of the same photograph. This one. And I thought, bastards, how did you get such a nice photograph? And I haven't got it. And I went back in to Facebook and saw that the account had come back. I thought, great. So I started saving all of the pages, like his timeline, for example. Um, there it is. Why did it suddenly come back? He hadn't done it. I mean, obviously, <laughs> you know, he, he died in the plane crash and they have no Wi-Fi in heaven. Well, maybe they do. They don't where he's gone. It's even worse than Nepal, you know. Um, but there is a clue. It says here, remembering Andreas Lubitz. This is a memorialized account. When you die, your family members can preserve your uh, Facebook account as a memorial to you. 
This is quite useful in a way because you can find those old photographs and stuff like that. But also it stops their name coming up as a birthday. I have an uncle that passed away. And every year on his birthday, it says, send him a birthday wish. You know, wish you were still here. And uh, people s- keep sending you things like saying, Lionel, you know, where are you? Why don't you reply to my, you know. And it's like, <laughs> just memorialize his account if you're going to keep it up there. Um, but also it helps us to know if somebody's passed away. And they have. So any, uh, any other questions at all? Social media, another one. <laughs> How to know who's uh, visit my account in Facebook or Twitter? Why? That's a good question. Um, who's visited your account in Facebook and Twitter? I'm, I'm often asked that. There is no kind of direct equivalent um, in, uh, like there is in LinkedIn, where you can see who's visited you. All you can do is set a little bit of a trap, maybe, uh, and get people to click on a page that records IP addresses, like we saw earlier. But that won't tell you exactly who they are. But again, one important thing is jigsaw identification. For example, we had a... I was investigating an an anonymous Twitter account. And I sent the owner of the Twitter account to a web page that I made. And he visited it, and I got his IP address. It didn't tell me who he was, but it did tell me the town that he lived in. Then I looked on Facebook and found somebody that was promoting that Twitter account that lived in that small town as well. So by adding together the pieces, doing that detective work, um, following leads, trying things, failing, but then putting together the small details that you find, you know, then you can build a larger picture. Um, but, yeah, sorry, that doesn't answer your question at all, so I do apologize. But, yeah, there's, there's nothing directly like there is with... LinkedIn that will trace who's visited you on Facebook. Sugoi. Um, okay. Well, if nobody has any more questions, how are we doing for time? One minute. Well, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll tell a joke. Oh, we have a couple of questions. So. <laughs> we'll come to you in a minute. Sorry. <laughs> um, what are some of the pitfalls with using these tools? Like, how reliable are they? Um, okay. If, for example, you were looking up somebody's domain name, it is possible that they've lied about their registration details. If they do, they run a risk of losing the domain name. But if it's a short-term contract, they're not going to be worried about losing a $5 domain name. A lot of people don't realize that you can do that lookup anyway. Um, And people don't often know that they're, you know, a target of investigation. But with deeply suspicious people, you have to be careful. If they send you to a website or send you an email, don't download any pictures if you can help it. Use a VPN to hide your IP address if it traces back to your newspaper or broadcasting uh, website. There is a danger, I guess, in using some of these techniques against perfectly innocent, ordinary people, and you'll look like pretty bad for invading their privacy. So there are ethical questions Uh, regarding pinging somebody's mobile phone to see where they are in the world, you'll look really awful if, um, you know, it blows up in your face. So, I mean, it's easy for us in the BBC. We just have to get permission. uh, And if the person is sufficiently awful enough that nobody's going to cry about them, then we might get permission to to use them. Was there a particular tool that you had in mind? They all have their own risks. I'll tell you, do you remember I showed you um, Spokeo? which showed us all of the accounts owned by the New York bomber. There's another site called emailsherlock.com. Email Sherlock is pretty good. It's very similar, but don't use it. Because you type in somebody's email address to investigate them, they get an email telling them that they are being investigated. And it's like, what is the point of your website? You know. So I got an email one day saying, somebody on, in Washington with this IP address is looking at you on email, Sherlock. Oh, oh great. Um, now, now I wonder who it is. <laughs> Hi. Hello. I'm Abhishek from India Spend. Oh, uh, I would like to... Uh, I want, uh, I've been, uh, 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 it, it occurred to me that any URL, you cannot get the unique page views of that URL, any third-party URL. Mm. 
Yeah. So so no 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 website wants to uh, share it. I mean, <laughs> there are many website journalists here, yeah. but nobody wants to share their own page views with ah, anybody. So why nice is that? Why is that? And is there any view <laughs> way to do it? Um, firstly, they can be faked. Um, you can buy likes. You can buy anything. I bought 1,000 followers on Twitter, not for my account, but for another one. Um, page views, it is market-sensitive information. Um, if you're going to an advertiser, uh, and you, you know, part of the thing is, right, okay, well, I have 1,000 people visiting my website every month, or a million people, uh, but if you share the page views and it's down one month, they might try not to advertise with you. So, but there are sites like Alexa which try to guess how popular a website is through clicks, and you know Google will do that as well. So you can guess, but it's hard to get accurate information. Uh, but, but can't it be done anyhow? I mean, I find it difficult to understand that why it can't be done. Well, a lot of um, a lot of websites they have. Um, if you go to their domain name and put forward slash stats for statistics. Um, then that's a way of doing it. Or if you do a search for Webalizer and then site colon whatever their domain name is, then uh, you might be able to uh, get into their stats, uh, their page views that way. Uh, Webalizer, it's going really slowly at the moment. Oh, here we go. And um, Okay, what have we got here? Oh, I have no idea, but let's let's have a look. Log file analysis. Is this going to give it? Usually it says Webalizer on the page rather than in the web address, but um, no, that's going to a Wikipedia-type website. So if I say Webalizer and um, if I say uh, site colon edu, for example... usage statistics for uh, Rochester University for the last 12 months. This is what the statistics look like. So if I go to September 2016, which is this month, I can have a look at their statistics and see um, their most popular part of their website. I can find the, um, uh, the entry pages where people land on their website for the first time exit pages where they leave, their IP addresses, which can be traced back um, to where they come from. Um, so it looks like they're very popular in Eastern Europe, uh, Ukraine, uh, Kiev star, Poland um, have been visiting them. And I can also see uh, referring websites and the search strings. These are things that people have typed in to Google to get to their website. So, but that's only if they make this um, unprotected, which does happen occasionally, but most people will protect it because th it's private information. Yeah, they, they, they think, you know, the same reason you have curtains on your room, you know. They, they don't want people looking at how popular or unpopular their website is. If you had a question, yeah? I want to ask how to search about a photo if its dimension is changed the, in the metadata. For example, if I download one uh, image and I put it in the notepad and take a cut, is it the same uh, result? Um, I would say but a pothole. You wanted to see how wide it was, whether it's got bigger. Sorry? Well, you were investigating potholes, did you say, or...? I am investigating one image, but I show it, uh, sorry, in, web, in one uh, search engine, but it needs a specific dimension for the engine. Ah. So I change it on the notepad with a new mm. dimension. It will give me uh, the same uh, information. If you're making it bigger, sometimes it goes all pixelated and horrible and won't work. But sometimes, if you're do talking about reverse image searching, um, let's say that you have a person take taking a photograph of themselves outside of a hotel, cut them out. Because if you want to locate where they are, other people have taken the same photo. So crop them out and just search for the hotel in the background. 
Another great trick for working with reverse image searching is to make the photograph black and white because sometimes the colors will confuse it. It'll find loads and loads of women that have the same pink sweater and it won't find that exact photograph. But if you make the image black and white, then it starts looking at the face shape and stuff like that. It's much more emphasis on the shape rather than the color. Uh, you get different results if you make it black and white. It's sometimes better if it's not working for you. A search on the resolution of the pixel. Um, yeah, it, when you do a reverse image search in Google, let's do one, shall we? Let's uh, Google, google.com. And I'm going to go into images. And if I click on this little camera, I can upload an image or paste in a, an image web address. So let me choose something on my computer. Let's hope there's nothing rude. And um, mm, 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 mm. all right, let's choose this photo of me then that we saw earlier. So it, it could be kind of looking in different ways, but actually it's analyzing this photograph and it says that it thinks this is a photograph of Paul Myers because it's found me on a web address. I'm not a musician. That's a different one. <laughs> Visually similar images. Can you see? It's actually found, I don't know, it's done some biometric scan and has looked at my great big long nose and how wide my eyes are. And it says, that's me, which is right, and that's me, which is right. Uh, I don't know where it got the idea that that was me, Jesus. Um, <laughs> And then it finds uh, instances of that photo on other people's web pages. And um, here it says all sizes, and it will find me different sizes of the same image. In fact, it's only found one size, but it would find you others. Now, a really important trick here is to look for the largest image. Yes, because that, that means it's probably... Um, the original, and then you can look at the EXIF data, the metadata, and see when it was taken. Another way of doing that, and not many people know this, okay? I'll give, give you a little trick. If you're trying to find the first time that an image was used on the internet, and you do a reverse image search, go to search tools and time. And then you can go to custom range and say, I only want instances of this image being posted up to the year 2012, let's well, say 2013, and it will look before 2013 for that photograph. And that way you can see the original photograph, who, who posted it originally, and maybe get a larger size photo that way. Okay. Yeah, we've run out of time, so thanks for coming along. I might be doing a, something on Facebook tomorrow as part of a joint session with um, Steffi from Storyful. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for coming along. Thank you.